Psalm 105 is the second of the so-called historical psalms and the first of a cluster of three historical psalms along with 106 and 107. Remarkably, and unlike the succeeding two psalms, Psalm 105 tracks Israel's early years without mentioning her great sins. The story climaxes on this happy note, God brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing, verse 43. Here's how that happened. God protected Abraham and his son Isaac and his son Jacob, though they were few in number of little account and sojourners in a foreign land, as verse 12 says. God used Jacob's son Joseph to help Egypt prepare for a catastrophic famine. Egypt became the new temporary home for God's people. But in time, the Egyptians betrayed the Israelites and enslaved them. But God wasn't alarmed. This was part of his plan, as he had told Abraham generations earlier in Genesis 15. Through deadly plagues, Moses proved God's might over Egypt. In their exodus, Israel plundered the Egyptians using a phrase from Exodus chapter 12, gaining wealth for a new life in a new land beyond the Sinai wilderness. So that's the story as uh, Psalm 105 summarizes it. But why does Psalm 105 omit Israel's sins, which are so central to the story as told everywhere else in the Bible? Because this psalm is not mainly about Israel. It is about God and his covenantal faithfulness. He made a covenant with Abraham, verse 9 says, and remembered his holy promise, verse 42. God made Israel into a great people. Why? Verse 45 says, so that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. This psalm is a call to whole life worship. Even today, for the offspring of Abraham, his servant, the children of Jacob, his chosen ones. And that's why the prelude of Psalm 105 is a rich call to action. Verbs proliferate, give thanks, call on his name, make known his deeds, sing to him, glory in his holy name, make known his deeds, remember his works, seek the Lord, rejoice, and other verbs like that throughout the psalm. Why? Because God kept his promise to bless Abraham and his descendants and to give them a good land. We need to remember, as 1 Samuel 7, 12 says, that till now the Lord has helped us. His providence can be strange, but his ways are always best and fully worthy of our worship. Let's listen to Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wondrous works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in the, all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the word that he commanded for a thousand generations the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number of little account and sojourners in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Touch not my anointed ones. Do not harm my prophets. When he summoned a famine 
on the land and broke all the supply of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters. His neck was put in a collar of iron until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes. He turned their hearts to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They did not rebel against his words. They uh, he turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their king. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and fiery lightning bolts through their land. He struck down their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and the locusts came, young locusts without number, which devoured all the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all the firstborn in their land, the firstfruits of all their strength. Then he brought out Israel with silver and gold. There was none among his tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for covering and fire to give them light by night. They asked, and he brought quail and gave them bread from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the fruit of the people's toil, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord.